everyone. Okay, so here's the Freedom Art Journal page. If you haven't seen my Art Journal Flip video, um, I previewed this in that video, so you got to see a little sneak peek of it. So I'm just doing a whole bunch of collage, and this is on the back side of the telephone page that I made. And um, so I'm using Mod Podge, and this is a map from San Diego, I think. I believe I got this book of maps from a garage sale for like 50 bucks cents or something like that and this is a paper towel and um, I just separated the layers and glued it and the letters are backwards and that's okay because it's just adding texture and it's most of those letters are going to get covered up anyway so this is some music paper I bought that from a local thrift shop for 50 cents um, a whole book of paper uh, music anyway you know what I mean so I'm just tearing off some of the the edges and it's leaving this raw funky edge which is good because it's collage it's just supposed to leave some texture and some um the paper towel is leaving tactile texture and the uh the printed text is leaving visual texture so um so it's all good if it's not perfect and uh you're getting two videos in one on this you're getting an art journal page and an iCAD because I had enough supplies out to to finish both of them, so I figured, why not? So, this is the iCAD, and I'm just gluing down bits and pieces of the map, and um, I loved the page number, or the location number, or whatever it was, that big black square in the bottom middle of that um, iCAD. It was just, is really bold. You'll be able to tell more once it's dry, once the Mod Podge dries. And a lot of people ask me um, why I use Mod Podge versus gel medium versus, you know, other glues. And really, it's just because Mod Podge is really kind of affordable um, because you can, you know, get it, get it on a coupon at Michael's. So, um, and matte medium is so expensive. So, even on a coupon, it's more expensive than the the... Uh, Mod Podge. So I'm squirting out four different colors of acrylic paint, and this one is, I think, aqua bright green or something like that. Bright aqua green. This one is an Amsterdam acrylic, and I'm not sure the color, but it's this super limey green, and it's probably called like lime green or something. And then the purple is purple. Uh, some kind of purple. This blue that I'm using right here is the Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue. I know that for sure. I made this page a while ago, so it's been at least a month, month and a half. So, um, so I'm just using my fingers and blending it here and there. Now, with all of the colors on the left, the teal, the green, and the blue, all three of those will blend and make beautiful colors. The purple will blend with all of them except for the green. When it blends with the green, it turns into this funky, you can see it a little bit up in the left-hand corner right above my hand, um, funky orangey color. So I tried kind of covering that orangey-brown color, um, yeah, with blue. So, And I'm doing the same thing for the index card. There's not much else to say about that. So, okay, so with all the leftovers, I got out my favorite new brush and started doing like an ombre. So I, I side loaded the brush. So one side had one color, one side had the other, and then um, blended the two together with a lot of back and forth, back and forth and created this ombre from the lime green to the light green to the blue to the purple. And um, this this brush of mine, which is my new favorite brush, is a one-inch flat wash brush, and it's by Princeton. I got it from the uh, Aaron Brothers when they had their buy one, get two free sale. And the brush is great because unlike the Simmons, the Simmons brush is really thick, they're both one inch wide, so the thickness is what I'm talking about. And I'm using my sew stamper on this index card. I'll tell you about that in a minute. 
um, the, it's not as thick, so you, it feels like you've got more control, and it's a little springier. So anyway, um, uh, the so stamper is just a you just run it along, and it it puts ink. It's automatically inking, so it inked up the index card with like a faux stitch pattern. And I don't know what kind of satanic ink they put into those so stampers because that stuff does not dry. Oh my gosh, it's some kind of pigment ink, but I'll I'll tell you about that later. So this is a Studio Foam stamp by Claudine Helmuth, and it's like just this funky swirly design. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I bought it. I might as well use it. So, and I'm using silver, and I don't know which silver I ended up grabbing, but it's a silver. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was one of the Lumiere silvers. It was yammering on, so. And I just stamped it in two places. Now, normally I, I adhere by the rules of, of three, and I probably should have stamped a little bit up in that top right corner um, when it comes to design. But in this case, I just felt compelled to just stamp it the twice, so I did. And then I'm using some uh, fluid acrylic by Utrecht, which is Blix brand, and a blade brush. And I'm just uh, going around some of the edges, just defining some. And then I use, this is the Simmons brush, the one inch flat, and see how thick it is? The the Princeton one is super thin. There's a lot less, um, I don't want to call them hairs, I don't want to call them fibers. Bristles, thank you, bristles. I heard you out there saying bristles, so thank you for saying bristles. So this is Turquoise Thalo, I believe, by Golden, and I'm using the edge of a credit card just to create some grid lines. And I didn't want to do it in black because black would make it pop too much. I've been trying to go a little bit more sparingly on the black because I've realized that whenever you put black down, it becomes a focal point. So even if you're using a, a different color, a color that's really dark like that th Thalo Turquoise is, um, it's still not going to pop as much as the black will. So... I am using another one of my Princeton brushes, and this one is a liner brush, and I am using the Artist Loft Metallic Black Acrylic Paint, and I'm just writing Freedom right on the top up there, as you can see. And then I went back over it and just kind of added a little bit more definition. I'll make it pop later. Pop it like it's whole. Pop it like it's whole. Like that. So, let's see. Do I have anything funny to tell you guys? Have I done anything funny? I don't think I've been very funny lately. I Well, I have been funny, but I'm saving that funny for another video. So, yeah. So, okay, this is my Stabilo black pen, it's the point eighty eight, and um I'm just writing what freedom is to me and I did not do this page on the fourth of July, which, you know, Americans celebrate freedom. Uh this is more about like personal freedom, uh, about things in my life and how I can be the kind of the master of myself. Cause sometimes I lack a lot of control. Shut up, Jaffer. Shut up, Jaffer. No, the sound did not skip. I told her twice. Because, yeah, I, I tend to not be able to control myself. Hello, impulses. Where do you think that came from? Just saying. I know who I am. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I was just writing a lot about what it meant to me and what freedom is and how... I can express my freedom and be me and um, particularly um, just in yeah I'm not gonna go into detail but anyway there you go so free it's all about freedom so I am using my uniball signo white pen 
and I am just doing the, if it were right side up, the left side of the letters and the bottom. See? Now you can tell. And that just made the freedom pop a little bit more. And then I think all that's left is inking the edge with black archival ink. Yep. See? I was right. Now, um, here's the pictures of the, the finished art journal page. Um, don't go anywhere because there's more footage. You're going to see the, the companion iCAD that kind of went along with this. But you can see some of the texture from the paper towel and all of the cool music notes in the background and the white splatters and the, the fringe from the notebook or from the edge of the map paper. Um, so I really liked how this came out. It came out, it's very, very busy, very, very colorful, but I like it. So there, that was the iCAD as it stood. And then I used my Versamark pen with some, I believe it's Ranger silver embossing powder. Okay, so as you can see, I'm using a brush right now to brush away the, the embossing powder from that pigment pen. Uh, or from the pigment so stamper. I used the so stamper about five days before I did this part of the iCAD. And then I covered the entire iCAD with a spray finish, like a spray sealer. And that pigment ink still stuck, or the, the embossing powder still stuck to that pigment ink wherever the so stamper was. So I told you, I don't know what kind of satanic pigment ink they put into that stuff, but if I use my sew stamper again, um, which I will because I like it, um, I will probably emboss it with clear embossing powder so that way it sets right then and there because this stuff did not want to, to be dried or maintained or managed or wrangled or anything. So I just wrote... Uh, show me how big how big your brave is, which is a lyric from a Sarah Bareilles song, um, and it gets stuck in my head, so I just wanted to get it out. This is a black India ink pen, and I'm just going around all the edges. So, and if you don't know the song, it's called Brave. It's a really good song. It's like Katy Perry's Roar, but good. And um. If you're ready for the uh, laundry to go off, here it goes. Give it about 20 seconds. Maybe it'll, I'll finish before it happens. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, I'm going around it. and I love that, that part of that song always makes me scream at the top of my lungs. Show me how big a brave is. It's good. It's good. good song. Like, I like that song. So, yeah, I probably could have sped this up a little faster for you, because again, I'm just going right around the edges, so you've probably, you've probably skipped ahead. Oh, my wife just informed me I have some time before the laundry goes off, because I'm almost done, so. Um, I don't know why I'm heating this. I think there was still some embossing powder that needed to be melted, so. Not my favorite iCAD ever, but there you go. And if you're wondering what I do with my iCADs, stay tuned because in the next couple weeks I'm going to show you a video on how I am going to start keeping my iCADs and um, I think you're going to like it. So archival ink right around the edges and there is the card. And again, lots of texture and I just had fun making it, which is what those iCADs are all about. So hope you like it. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.